Hi, this is Neil Davidson. Welcome to another tutorial on avforums.tv. In this episode, we're going to take a look at anamorphic projection. There are three main elements of an anamorphic projection system. The first element is the 235 to 1 anamorphic screen. The second element is an anamorphic lens which goes in front of the projector. The final element is a projector which produces the necessary anamorphic stretch modes. The screen that you need to use for an anamorphic projection system has an aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1. On the screen here you can see a clip from the James Bond film Casino Royale. This clip, as you can see, has black bars at the left and right. Now, this section in the centre here represents what you would see on a normal 1.78 to 1 screen. And also, when you're watching a 2.35 to 1 movie, like James Bond, on a normal 16 by 9 screen, the problem of course is that you have black bars at the top and bottom of the image. In an anamorphic projection system, we get rid of these black bars and fill the entire 2.35 to 1 screen. In the 1950s, Fox introduced the Cinemascope format. They introduced this format to combat the rise in popularity of television sets, which were taking away from revenues at the cinema. The main feature of Cinemascope was that the image itself was much wider than the television screens that people were using at home, and it gave a much more immersive effect. The anamorphic films that we have now carry on this tradition. They are much wider than our standard television aspect ratio of 16 by 9. In a normal 16 by 9 projection system, we'd be able to see this area of the screen where the image is. These edges would not be visible. In a 2.35 to 1 screen, however, we have this extra space that we can use to allow us to make this image taller and thus get rid of the black bars at the top and bottom. To create this larger image is a two-part process. The projector has to provide an anamorphic stretch. It has to stretch this image here so that it completely fills the 16 by 9 portion. This is an electronic process within the projector. The second part of the process is an optical process we need to stretch the image this way so that we can completely fill our screen. This is what the image looks like on a 16 by 9 screen when the electronic vertical stretch has been applied by the projector. As you can see from James Bond's face, he's been stretched out vertically but with no stretch horizontally. The next step in the process is to apply the optical stretch with the anamorphic lens in front of the projector. As you can see from James Bond's face, what we've done is we've stretched the image horizontally but not vertically and that's put it back into the correct aspect ratio of CinemaScope but it's filled our entire screen here without any black bars top or bottom. Part 2 of the system is the motorised anamorphic lens. The system that we have here consists of a small motor, a bracket to hold the lens to the projector and the lens itself. It's very simple, it just pivots in and out which I can demonstrate here. Now obviously it's not quite as easy as just attaching an anamorphic lens to the front of the projector. You need to consider a number of factors such as the throw ratio and the lens shift of the projector that you're using to get the best results. But these are things that we'll cover in a future tutorial.